Uh, here you have <coughs> some examples about free falling, which is vertical motion, Newton's second law. <laughs> Here, we say the Newton's second law of motion is given by this differential equation, m times dv by dt equals f. And here, f is the external force, m is the mass of the body, then v is the velocity of the body with the same direction of uh, v, with v. T is time. <clears throat> We have this example as the application of first order. Uh, in the example, it says a parachutist falling towards Earth with velocity v. The velocity of the parachutist is v. His acceleration is given by this differential equation. This is the acceleration of the parachutist. Assume that. The parachutist starts from rest. That means it's starting from stopping point, okay? Uh, the parachutist starting from rest. That means when the parachute is stopped before starting, means the velocity is zero and also distance is zero, okay? That means at t to be zero, the velocity is zero. That means v of zero is zero. This uh, an initial condition, okay? V of zero is zero. Here, we should find the velocity V equals V of T and the distance X equals X of T of the parachutist has fallen after T seconds. So let's write down the given information. We have given the acceleration. Acceleration is differentiation of velocity. Here we have X, which is distance. V, is velocity. dv by dt is a, a is dv by dt. This is acceleration. A is acceleration. From distance to velocity, from distance to velocity, we must take derivative. The poly duans are not going to do it. La dan bo dat bo khirai. But she be again, but that extra. Okay. Then from velocity to acceleration, but tau dan again derivative. So if you have acceleration, how to get velocity by integration, and also from velocity to distance again integration. Okay. And yes. 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 From distance, we can get. Uh, acceleration by taking two, uh, by taking the derivative of distance twice. And also by taking the integration of acceleration twice, we get distance. And if we take only one integration of acceleration, we get velocity. And from velocity, how to get distance by taking one integration, okay? And here we have given, <clears throat> here we have given the acceleration. The acceleration is dv by dt equals 32 minus 2v. Here, uh, this equation is the differentiation of v with respect to t. But we must find v here because here we are asking to find the velocity and also distance. What else is given? It's given that at t uh, from the rest means velocity is zero at starting point. So v of zero equals zero. And before starting, the distance is zero. That means x of zero is zero. We have this. So we should find v of t equals to what? And x of t equals to one. We should find the velocity and distance after t seconds. We have given the acceleration equation 
from this equation, we can get V. How? Ah, this is a first order part, uh, ordinary differential equation. We can solve it and to find V. We say it's a separable uh, differential equation. We solve it. We say these are given information. To find V, what we do? We first multiply both sides by dt and then dividing by 32 minus 2v. Yeah, we say dv by dt, sorry. dv by dt equals 32 minus 2v. If we multiply both sides by dt, what we get? dv equals 32 minus 2v dt. And in, separ in separable differential equation, we must write down uh, dv with v and dt with d. So here, how to remove this here? By dividing both sides by the brackets. Dividing both sides by 32 minus 2v. And we get dv over 32 minus 2v equals dt. Now, we are gonna find the integration for both sides. We take the integration for both sides. What we get? Sorry? No, but separate one, but can't talk. So, Jama, can you get a shower? In tau, can you get Yes. We are going to take integration for both sides. What we get in the left hand side, we get a half minus a half length of 32 minus 2v. That's it. In the right hand side, we get t plus c. Look, how to find this integration? I'm going to write down this solution here the steps of the solution. We say we have the integration of 32 minus 2v dv to negative one. We say if you have a bracket to the power of negative one, we must have derivative of the bracket out of the bracket. Then the result is the length of the bracket. I can't make my home to one. I can't make my home to one. I can't make my home to one. I got a linear one. Talk already. So here, what's the derivative of this bracket inside? It's only minus two. Okay. So we must have minus two here. So we must divide by minus minus a half also. And here, this equals this this integration equals ln of thirty two minus two v. That's what I have written. Okay. This is how to find the integration. And here we say, if we first multiply both sides by minus two to get lin, only the lin in the left hand side, multiplying both sides by minus two. Let's say this is c1, okay? And here we say lin 32 minus two v equals minus two t minus two c1. And we let to C1 to be uh, <clears throat> C1, to be C. I'll leave it just for now. And now, how to get V? That's the angle of length. How to get out V from the length? By taking E for both sides. If we take E for both sides, what we get? E to the power length, 32 minus 2V equals e to the power minus two t plus minus two c1. And here we say the left-hand side, what we get, what you get in the left-hand side, we get 32 minus two v equals, 32 minus two v equals e to the power minus two t times e to the power minus two c1. Now we move this 32 to the other side and you get two v minus two v equals e to the power minus two t 
times e to the power minus two C1 minus 32. How to get V? We, we divide both sides. We divide both sides by negative two, negative two. And here we get V equals dividing both sides by negative two. We get V equals e to the power minus two T times e to the power minus two C1 plus 16, plus 16. And here we say, we let e to the power minus two C to be C. Uh, e, e constant, but to any, now let's do C1, her constant, now you need C, we let this to be C. So we get V equals C e to the power minus two T plus 16. And this is the solution. But here we have a constant. And also we have given this condition, this initial condition. We apply this initial condition to get the value of C. And he said, if you remember principle C, you have to multiply the two the power of C. Sorry? You have to multiply the power of the C. No, no, we just replace this by C. This one. This is a constant. Let's name it A, B, C, any, any, any constant sign, okay? Here, we say V of zero equals zero. And so, we say zero equals C e to the power minus two times zero is to zero. Here, we replace T by zero. Equal plus 16. So, C is minus 16. This is the value of C. And here we say V of T equals minus 16, uh, e to the power minus two T plus 16. This is the velocity at any time. And how to get, I took, I took integration, I took integration. I took integration for acceleration and you got velocity. Okay, from, in, from acceleration, we must take integration to get velocity, okay? And now, <clears throat> this is and so one of the parts of the exam, part one of the exam. Now, we should find x of t. We say x of t is the integration of v of t dt. We take an integration for v, from velocity, by taking one integration, we get distance or x of t. That means x of t equals the integration of what's v? v is this equation that you found, okay? Minus 16 e to the power minus 2t plus 16. What's this integration? This dt. Here we have minus 16 times e to the power minus 2t. Uh, so it equals 8 e to the power two, minus 2t two plus 16t plus c. Here, the integration of minus 16 e to the power minus 2t dt equals what? Here we must have derivative of this exponent. We must have exponent of this uh, derivative of this exponent. But here we have minus 16. This minus 16 could be eight times minus two. This minus two is derivative of the exponent. And we can take this eight to out of the integration. And inside the integration is e to the power minus two t. Well, let's see, that's all. Okay, we say, I mean, tau kari. إيبا تواني ناقص دو تيمانها 
ابي تشي مالها بالي انا ناقص دو او شانسي مالها هيك بس انا دو هاش ضربي ناقص دو يعني اتواني ان شانسي هل ابي ندرو ان شانسي ما هل بدو ندرو ليه ابي تشي مالها بين ناقص دو مالها بي ابي دابا شي ناقص دو شي بدي اوكي انا في هذا الرسم بس 8 e to the power minus 2t so the integration here for the first term is x of t equals 8 e to the power minus 2t then you have 16 what's the integration of 16 16t plus c and here we also need to find the value of c we need to find the value of c here how to find the value of c by applying this condition we can get c here we replace x by zero and t by zero to get the value of c we say x of zero equals zero and so zero equals e to the power eight e to the power zero plus 16 times zero plus c here we say zero equals eight plus c so c is minus eight c is minus eight and the result is x of t equals eight e to the power minus two t plus 16 t minus eight this is the result this is the distance at any time and this was the velocity at any time we have given this differential equation and from this differential equation that's the the given differential equation is acceleration to find the velocity and distance from the acceleration if we take integration we get velocity and then we take integration for the velocity we get distance that's all and now we have another example do you have any question about the previous example سمعتي بكني نكا سيدانيا اوكي هي وي هاف ان اكزامبل ان ذيس اكزامبل ات سيس ا بارتيكل موفز فيرتيكالي اندر ذا فورس اوف جرافيتي جي جي از ذا جرافيتي فورس اجينست ا ريزيستنس k v squared against a resistance which is k v squared where k is a constant it says the movement of the particle is governed by this differential equation so this is the movement of the particle we have a particle it's fall down and the movement of the particle is given by this uh differential equation if the particle starts off from rest that means at the starting time distance is zero velocity is zero okay when it's it's stopped as as it says the particle starts off from rest that means at time zero, velocity and distance are zero. So that the velocity of that particle at any time t is given by this. So we must find v. We must find v here. Such that here lambda, we have this lambda. It says lambda equals the square root of g over k. It is g, the square root of g over k. Then find the velocity when time approaches to infinity. That means if t tends to infinity, what's the velocity? We find the velocity. Okay. So let's find or let's solve this example. We have given this differential equation. In solving this differential equation, we must get this formula by using this substitution. We replace e g over k by lambda. I mean, the square root of g over k by lambda. Let's first try to solve the differential equation. 
the differential equation is dv over dt equals g minus kv squared, g minus kv squared. We have dv over dt equals g minus k v squared. This is a separable differential equation. We can write down dv with v and dt with t. We first multiply both sides by dt. And what we get? We get dv equals g minus kv squared dt. How to remove this here? By dividing both sides by g minus kv squared. We divide both sides by g minus k v squared. And what we get? We get dv of g minus k v squared equals dt. But here, before we take the integration, we must use this substitution. We replace each the square root of g over k by lambda. In the denominator, if we take k as the common, in the denominator, in the, here we have g minus kv squared. If we take k, what we get? This case cancel out, and here we get g over k. Is it? So, oh. OK, yeah. Here we have g minus k v squared. What if we take k as the common between these two terms? If we take k, what's left? Here we get g over k minus v squared. Is it? We get that. If you multiply this into the bracket, we get the same as the previous one. OK. So now we take k as the common between terms in the denominator. In the denominator, we have g minus kv squared. From this, we say dv over. If we take k as the common, we get g over k minus v squared. It equals dt. Now we have this form, g over k. We have a fraction in this form, g over k. We say the square root of g over k is lambda. By squaring both sides, here we get lambda squared equals g over k. Is it? We just square both sides. We get g over k is lambda squared. That means we replace g over k by lambda squared. We replace g over k by lambda squared. Because here we have given this substitution. It says lambda is the square root of g over k. So we say 1 over k times dv over lambda squared minus v squared. Lambda squared minus v squared equals dt. Yes. I'm OK. Now, it's, it's separated dv with dv with v and dt alone, OK? With dt, dt with t. Now, we take integration for both sides. We take integration for both sides. If we take integration for both sides, what we get? We get 1 over k, integration of. Here, yeah, this, this is a constant. That's why I moved to out of the integration, OK? 1 over k is a constant. Let's write down first inside the integration. Integration of 1 over k multiplying by dv over lambda squared minus v squared equals integration of dt. So 1 over k is a constant. We take out of the uh, integration and we get 1 over k integration of dv over lambda squared minus v squared equals integration of dt. Now we take integration for both sides. We take integration for both sides. Here, we say integration of the left-hand side is tan hyperbolic inverse. 
stand hyperbole inverse of V over lambda. Of V over lambda. You see, from this, you see one over K times. Tan hyperbolic inverse of V over lambda or over lambda. This is the integration. Here I am, I am a yasai. Here I am a yasai. Here I am a yasai. Pasha, who is not a step of candy pen? And the right hand side is T plus C. Okay. Oh, let's see, just see. Let, let, let's put C to be zero. Okay, leave it. So now we have one over K lambda times tan hyperbolic inverse of V over lambda equals T. Here we multiply both sides by K lambda. What we get? We get tan hyperbolic inverse of V over lambda equals K lambda T. We have this. And now, how to take, how to get V over lambda? How to take V to out of the tan inverse, tan hyperbolic inverse? We should take tan for both sides. We take tan for both sides here. If you have, let's say, sine inverse of, let's say, x. How to take this to out of the sine? We take sine for it. Sine and sine inverse are cancel each other. These are inverse to each other, okay? For example, if you have tan of y, how to take this to out? We, we take tan inverse. Tan inverse with tan are cancel. And here we have tan hyperbolic inverse. How to cancel out this tan hyperbolic inverse? We should take tan hyperbolic for both sides. And we get V over lambda equals tan hyperbolic of K lambda T. We just take tan hyperbolic for both sides and get this. And now, what's tan hyperbolic? We say tan hyperbolic of U equals E to the power U <coughs> minus one. Dividing by e to the power u plus one. Is that? We take this from sine and cosine. We say sine hyperbolic u. That's exponential form of this is e to the power u minus e to the power minus u divided by two. And also the cosine hyperbolic of u equals e to the power u uh, plus e to the power minus u dividing by two. Okay. This is the rule of sine and cosine hyperbolic. So it's two times this. Is it? This is two. Okay. These are the rules of uh, converting sine, sine hyperbolic of u to its exponential form and cosine also. And here, that's the conversion of tan hyperbolic u to its exponential form. Am I done with two? Okay. Okay. So here we say uh, we are going to write down the exponential form of this one. We say tan hyperbolic of u equals e to the power 2u minus 1 dividing by e to the power 2u minus plus 1. Okay. We have this rule for tan hyperbolic of u. And u here is k lambda t. It is k lambda t. So v over lambda equals <coughs> a to the power 2k lambda t minus 1 dividing by a to the power 2k lambda t plus 1. We just replace u by k lambda t. OK, this rule. And let's see if we got the same as here. Yes. Now, we multiply both sides by lambda to get only V in the left-hand side. 
what we get? We get V equals e to the power, so lambda times e to the power uh, 2k lambda t minus one dividing by e to the power 2k lambda t plus one. As you see here, we got the same formula. V is lambda times e to the power 2k lambda t minus one dividing by e to the power 2k lambda t plus one. We got the same. So the videos is in that form. Now, we should find the velocity as the time approaches infinity. If time approaches infinity, what's the velocity? Okay, let's do it. If T approaches infinity, V equals to what? We should find V here. V is, I'm gonna do step by step, okay? V is lambda. Carbo uh, limit where again t probably infinity oh, history. e to the power 2k lambda t minus one dividing by e to the power 2k lambda t plus one. Okay, so we take the limit for this formula when t tends to infinity. We say the limit t approaches to infinity for e to the power. Let's say lambda times e to the power 2k lambda t minus one, dividing by e to the power 2k lambda t plus one. Here, in both numerator and numerator, we are going to take the exponential as the common. <coughs> if we take the exponential as the common between terms in the numerator, what we get? We get the limit of the t approach to infinity. So it's not x, it's t. For what? For lambda, if we take e between these two terms, what we get? e to the power 2k lambda t. What's left? 1 minus 1 over e to the power 2k lambda t. Is it? Here, we have e to the power 2k lambda t minus 1. If we take this as the common, what we get? Uh, e to the power 2k lambda t. I can learn one. I'm doing term here. I'm exponential. I'm going to show you the term. Term here, can I be? Term here, do I'm level exponential? Hit here, yeah. Double exponential. Okay. Double exponential. So I take a chunk less. E by two and do k lambda t. So that's for the numerator. And for the numerator, it's the same. For the denominator, we say. <coughs> e to the power 2k lambda t times 1 plus 1 over e to the power 2k lambda t. Here, these two are cancelled because they have the same base and same exponents. We get the limit of t, oh, I just write down, next, t approach to infinity. For what? For lambda times. 1 minus 1 over e to something dividing by 1 plus 1 over e to something. Let me, let me write down the exponents e to the power 2k lambda t. That's okay. Now, sorry, I want to do a step by step. Just on here, if t tends to infinity. What we get? This term is zero because this term is zero because the denominator is, is infinity. One over infinity is zero. And here we have e to the power infinity. E to the power infinity is infinity. Okay. This term is also zero. That means we get it equals lambda times one over one, which is lambda. That means if T approach to infinity, so the velocity is lambda. Thus, uh, if T approach to infinity, then V approach to lambda. So this is the result.
okay? Uh, it's only taking that image, it's nothing else, okay? I just did, I just did it step by step. You can just write down the results directly, okay? At the end, I'll put and jump a bonus mirror. You do step for you, Sabine San Jump. Okay? At the end, I may have one again, but how much would I give to our happy? It's a last of the bonus. Oh, but I'm later. Oh, boy, can take him than two, a cat lambda. Say, at one by Lobitology, but I'm by Lobital. Nag, but at one, you get a shabo, say, there's shabo jera, salo jero, you can let the happy gun or a bear. Lambda, I'm very again. We can use the little words. Nan Haman and Jam. Let's use the little. We have V equals lambda times e to the power uh, 2k lambda t minus 1, dividing by e to the power 2k lambda t plus 1. If you replace t by infinity here, yeah, I'm going to take the limit. Uh, the limit t approach to infinity for this one. If t is infinity, we get infinity over infinity. If it's infinity over infinity and zero over zero, in these two cases, we can use l'hôpital. How to use l'hôpital? We take derivative for numerator and denominator separately. Yeah, we get limit uh, t approach to infinity for what? Derivative of the numerator. For this term is zero. Is it? That I shall tell me as a suffragant. I did a shall tell me a come chicken. I got a duke lambda, sub the exponential. I got a lambda like my hair. And we get 2k lambda e to the power 2k lambda t. And in the denominator, we have only 2k lambda t e to the power 2k lambda t. These two are constant. And here you have 2k lambda t also. Because if you take derivative of the denominator, we get a uh, 2k lambda in the denominator times e to the power e to the power uh, 2k lambda t. These two are cancel out. So what's left? Only lambda. We say the limit of t approach to infinity for lambda is the lambda. As you see, we got the same result in both cases. You can use either this or that one. And so this is the end of chapter one. If you have no questions, let's take a break. And then after the break, we will start chapter two. Uh, we now have chapter two. We finished chapter one. And you will have a quiz by next Thursday. OK? Thursday. Well, I will tell you about the time, okay? Okay, okay, no worries. I'm gonna schedule it for you and then I'll let you know. Here, uh, we have chapter two. In chapter two, we have linear second order ordinary differential equations. In chapter one, we talked about first order ordinary differential equations and their applications. The applications of uh, first order differential equations in different sciences. Now we have linear second order ordinary differential equations. In this chapter, we have four sections. In section one, we have only some basic definitions and terminologies. And in section two, we have homogeneous equation. Here, homogeneous means the right hand side is zero. If we have zero in the right hand side, means that's homogeneous. Solutions to non homogeneous equation. Here in, in section three, we talk about uh, the solution of those uh, second order differential equations, which are not homogeneous, means, that means the right hand side is not zero. Here we have three subsections here method of undetermined coefficient. We use this met method for solving it. We also <coughs> solve the higher order ordinary differential equations. And we have order three, order four, and so on. So, how about those equations? How to solve them? Yeah. 
in the first uh, chapter we talked about first order and now we talk about second order and in subsection of two in the second subsection section of section three in this chapter we talk about solving high order linear ordinary differential equations it is similar to second order and then in the third subsection of section three we have method of variation of parameters this is another method here we have these two methods for solving non-homogeneous equations non-homogeneous second order linear differential equations we have method method of undetermined coefficient and also a method of variation of parameters we have these two methods for solving second order ordinary differential equations and also in section four we have applications of second order ordinary differential equations we talk about the applications of second order in mechanical vibrations and also also RLC circuits. We talk about these, the application of the second order or the differential equations. And these two about, I mean, about mechanical vibrations and R, RLC <coughs> circuits. First, we have uh, some basic definitions, and you should know what is uh, higher order ordinary differential equations and what's the second order ordinary differential equations. And then we talk about how to solve them. Here, we say a n of x times d to the power n over dx to the power n plus a n minus one of x times d to the power n minus one. I mean, uh, the n minus one order, n minus one order uh, for the uh, function. <clears throat> Yeah, d to the power n minus one of y to d into n minus one and so on up to i naught of x times y. This is a differential equation of order n, of order n. We just pick the highest derivative for order. For order, we choose the highest derivative. The highest derivative here is n. And the right-hand side is f of x. If f of x is zero, it means the differential equation is homogeneous. But if it's not zero, we say the differential equation is non-homogeneous. Here, as written here, if f of x is zero, then it is homogeneous. And if it's not zero, it is non-homogeneous. For the second order differential equation, we say, a times d squared of y by dx squared plus b times dy by dx plus cy equals zero. This is second order, uh, second order homogeneous differential equation. As you see, the order here for this differential equation is two. The order is two. And it's linear also, because here you have no <coughs> dependent variable. Yes. You have no dependent variable which is multiplied by the derivatives, okay? And you also have no uh, nothing in the right hand side means it is homogeneous. So this differential equation is order two. That means second order. It's linear and it's homogeneous. That means it's second order linear homogeneous differential equation. Here, since that's Second order, it depends on the order. If it's order one, means we have only one solution. If it's order two, we must have two solutions. And the sum of those solutions is this general solution for the differential equation. If we have a third order ordinary differential equation, so we must have three solutions. And the sum of all solutions is gonna be the solution for the differential equation. Yeah. For order n, if you have, yes. Look, a and b are constants. y1 and y2 are the solutions for this differential equation. And then I get how to order you do, do solution math. Basha, I can order you. Vale, I'm a quick hair do can, I'm a quick hair do can, I bet a cheat. I made a solution for differential equation. Okay. 
And for n n order, for n order, we say the solutions are y1, y2, up to y. The sum of these are all c1, y1, c2, y2, c2, y2, y2, y2 up to c in yn. The sum of these all solutions is going to be the solution for the differential equation. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm not going to talk about this uh, section because we cannot finish this today. So for next week, this one. This one is for next week. Thank you.